Okay, hi everyone, welcome back to Windows Server 2016. Core infrastructure services. Each of you reading this book is going to have a different acquired skill set and level of experience with the Windows Server environment. As I mentioned previously, being able to make servers run the operating system is a great and very important first step to doing real work in your environment. But until you know and understand what the purpose are behind the main roles available to run on Windows Server 2016. The only thing your server is doing is consuming electricity. A new, uh, sorry, a server is intended to serve data. The kinds of data that it serves and to what purpose depend entirely on what roles you determine the server must will serve appropriately you must install roles within windows server 2016 to make it do something we already know how to get roles installed onto our server but we have not talked about any of the purpose behind these roles in this chapter we will look at the core infrastructural roles within windows server this involves discussing the roles general purpose as well as plugging in some particular tasks dealing with those roles that you will be responsible for in your daily tasks as a server administrator. We will also cover new functions that are part of those roles which are being introduced with Windows Server 2016. In particular, what is a domain controller? Using ADDS to organize your network, the power of group policy, DNS overview, DHCP versus static addressing backup and restore MMC and MSC shortcuts. What is a domain controller? If we are going to discuss the core infrastructure services that you need in order to piece together your Microsoft driven network, there's no better place to start than the domain controller. A domain controller commonly referred to as a DC is a central point of contact, sort of a central hub that is accessed prior to almost any network communication that takes place. The easiest way to describe it is a storage container full of identification that happens on the network. Usernames, passwords, computer accounts, groups of computers, servers, groups of collection servers, security policies, five replication services, and many more things are stored within and managed by DCs. If you are not planning to have a domain controller to be one of your first servers in your Microsoft centric network, you might as well not even start building that network. They are essential to the way that our computers and devices communicate with each other and with the server infrastructure inside our companies. If you stopped reading at this point, in order to go install the domain controller role on your server. Welcome back because there is no role called domain controller. The role that provides all these capabilities is called Active Directory Domain Services or ADDS. This is the role that you need to install on a server. By installing that role, you will have turned your server into a domain controller. The purpose of running a DC really is to create this directory or database of items in your network. This database is known as Active Directory and is a platform inside which you build a hierarchical structure to store objects such as usernames, passwords, and computer accounts. Once you have created a domain in which you can store these accounts and devices, you can then create user accounts and passwords for your employees to utilize for authentication. You then also join your other servers and computers to this domain so that they can accept and benefit from those user credentials. Having and joining a domain is a secret sauce that allows you to walk from computer to computer within your company and log into and log onto each of them with your own username and password, even when you have never logged into that computer before. Even more powerful is the fact that it enables directory 
capable applications to authenticate directly against Active Directory when they need authentication information. For example, when I, as a domain administrator, log into my computer at work with my username and password, the Windows running on my computer reaches out to a domain controller server and verifies that my password is correct. Once it confirms that I really am who I say I am, it issues an authentication token back to my computer and I'm able to log in. Then once I am into my desktop and I open the application, let's say I open my Outlook to access my email, that email program is designed to reach out to my email server called an exchange server and authenticate against it to make sure that my own mailbox is displayed and not somebody else's. Does this mean I need to re-enter my username and password for Outlook or for any other application that I open from my computer? No. And the reason I do not have to re-enter my credentials over and over is because my username, my computer, and the application servers are all part of the domain. When this is true, as and is for most networks, my authentication token can be shared among my programs. So once I log into the computer itself, my applications are able to launch and open and pass my credentials through to the application server without any further input from me as a user. It would be quite a frustrating experience if we required our passwords to so if we required our users to enter passwords all day, every day, as they opened up programs that they need in order to do their work, the first domain control you set up in your network will be fully writable one, able to accept data from the domain to join the users and computers working within your network. In fact, most DCs in your network will likely be fully functional. However, it's worth taking a quick minute to point out a limited scope DC that can be installed called a read-only domain controller, ROTC, just like the name implies. An ROTC can only have its directory data read from it. Writes that might try to be accomplished to the domain like password changes or a new user account creations are impossible with an ROTC where would a limited access domain controller like to be like this be beneficial many companies are installing them into smaller branch offices or less secure sites so the local computers on site in those smaller offices still have quick and easy access to read from and authenticate to the domain without the potential security risk of an unauthorized user gaining access to the physical server and manipulating the entire domain in bad ways. Active Directory itself is a broad enough topic to warrant its own book and indeed there have been many written on this topic. Now that we have a basic understanding of what it is and why it's critical to have in our own Windows Server environment, let's get our hands dirty using some of the tools that get installed onto your domain controller using the ADDS role installation process. Using ADDS to organize your network, there is not a single tool that is used to manage all facets of Active Directory since it is such an expansive technology. Our configuration of the directory is spread across a number of different management consoles. Let's take a look at each of them and a couple of the most common tasks that you will perform inside these tools. Any of these management consoles can be launched from any of your domain controller servers. And just like we looked at in a previous chapter, the easiest way to launch these consoles are right from the tools menu in the upper right corner of server manager. Active directory users and computers. I'll start with the tool that is alphabetically last in the list of our active directory tools, because this is by far one which 
the everyday server administrator will use most often, AD users and computers, is the console from which all of the user accounts and computer accounts are created and managed. Open it up and you will see the name of your domain listed in the left column. Expand your domain name and you will see a number of folders listed here. If you are opening this on an existing domain controller in a well, grown network, you have pages and pages of folders listed here. If this is a new environment, there are only a handful. The most important point out there are computers and users. As common sense would dictate, these are the default containers in which new computer accounts and user accounts that join to the domain will be located. While this window looks quite a bit like File Explorer with a tree of folders, these folders aren't folders at all. Each Manilia colored folder icon that you see here is known as an organization unit, OU. OUs are the structure, structural containers that we use inside Active Directory in order to organize our objects and keep them all in sensible places. Just like with folders on a file server, you can create your own hierarchy of organization units here in order to sort and manipulate the location inside Active Directory, all of your domain joint network objects and devices. In the following screenshot, you can see that instead of having just a plain users and computer OUs, I have created some new U OUs, including subcategories, so that I have, so that as I grow my environment, I will have a more structured and organized directory user accounts. Now, that we have some OUs ready to structure our objects. Let's create a user account. Say we have a new server administrator coming on board and we need to get him an Active Directory login so that he can start his job. Simply find the appropriate OU for his account to reside within. Right click on the OU and navigate to new user. We are then presented with an information gathering screen about all things that an AD needs in order to create this new account. When finished, our new domain will be able to utilize his new username and password in order to log into computers and servers on the network. Within the security boundaries we have established on those machines, security groups. Another um, useful unit of organization inside Active Directory is security groups. We can do quite a bit of distinguishing between different types and kinds of users and computer accounts using organizational units. But what about when we need a little cross contamination in the structure? Perhaps we have an employee that handles some HR and some accounting responsibilities. Maybe it is more likely we have configured file and folder permissions on our file servers so that only people who are part of certain groups have access to read and write into particular folders. Susie from HR needs to have access to the payroll folder, but Joe from HR does not. By creating security groups inside Active Directory, we enable the adding and removing of specific user accounts, computer groups, or even other groups, so that we can granularly define access to our resources. You create new groups in the same way that you create user accounts by choosing the OU where you want the new group to reside, then right-clicking on that OU and navigating to new group. Once your group has been created, right-click on it and head into properties. You can then click on the members tab this is where you add in all of the users that you want to be part of this new group. Free staging computer accounts. While it is very common to utilize Active Directory users, 
and computers for creating new user accounts. It is far less common to even think about opening this tool when joining new computers to the domain. This is because the way that the majority of domains are configured, new computers are allowed to join the domain without any kind of pre-staging. In other words, as long as someone knows a username and password that has administrative rights within the domain, they can sit down at any computer connected to the network and walk through the domain join process on that local computer. It will successfully join the domain and Active Directory will create a new computer object for automatically these also generating computer objects place themselves inside default computers or you so in many networks if you click on that computers or you you will see a number of different machines listed and they might even be a mix of both desktop computers and servers that were recently joined to the domain and haven't been moved to an appropriate more specific OU yet in my growing lab environment, I recently joined a computer called Win10 and a couple of servers called CA1 and DC2 to the main. I did nothing in Active Directory prior to joining these machines to the domain. And so you can see that the new computer objects are still sitting inside that computer's um, container. Allowing um, new computers and accounts to place themselves inside the default computers or you is generally not a big problem for client systems. But if you allow servers to be also generated in that folder, it can cause you big issues. Many companies have security policies in place across the network. And these policies are often created in a way that will be automatically applied to any computer account residing in one of the generalized OUs. Using security policies can be a great way to lock down parts of client machines that users don't need to access or utilize. But if you inadvertently cause these lockdown policies to apply to your new servers, as soon as they join the domain, you can effectively break your server before you even start configuring it. Trust me, I've done it and unfortunate, and unfortunately your new server accounts that get added to Active Directory will be identified and categorized as any client workstation that is added to the, to the domain. So you cannot specify a different default container for servers simply because they are a server and not a regular workstation. So what can be done to alleviate this potential problem? Pre-staging the accounts for your new servers. You can even pre-stage all new computer accounts as a master principle, but I typically only see that requirement in large enterprises. Pre-staging a computer account is very much like creating a new user account. Prior to joining the computer to the domain, you create the account for it inside Active Directory. By accomplishing this creation of the object before the domain join process, you can get to choose which OU the computer will reside in when it joins the domain. You can then ensure that this is an OU which will or will not receive the security settings and policies that you intend to have in place on this new computer or server. I highly recommend pre-staging all computer accounts in Active Directory for any new servers that you bring online. If you make it a practice, even if it's not absolutely required all the time, you will create a good habit that may someday save you having to rebuild a server that you broke simply by joining it to your domain. So I'm going to leave it here today for this video. If you like listening, please consider like, sharing and subscribing. Thank you.